Hello, this is Professor Bennett from DigitalAudioTheory.com. In this programming example, 12.7.1, we will look at frequency interpolation with the discrete Fourier transform. In the last programming example, we considered the DFT of a cosine in which the frequency of the sinusoid was exactly the frequency of one of our DFT bends. While there is no singly typical DFT length, it's quite common in audio applications to see a value of n range from 64, maybe up to 2048. Let's consider n equals 1024 at a sample rate of 44.1k. For this particular configuration, we expect a frequency spacing of 44,100 divided by 1024, which equals about 43 hertz. However, this frequency resolution, especially in the low frequencies, is not fine enough to capture all the notes of the scale. In fact, bins 1 to 4 cover two octaves. Clearly, this poor frequency resolution misses a lot of notes. But also, bin frequencies don't even fall on notes from the A440 equal temperament scale. For these reasons, we can expect that most musical notes will actually exist between DFT bins. This raises the question, what happens to the DFT when the signal frequency falls below, between two DFT bins? The answer is that the magnitude becomes split between the two most adjacent bins, and the closer, ben, uh, and the closer bin gets the majority of the magnitude. The true underlying frequency can be estimated by considering the two adjacent bins, one higher and one lower, via interpolation. Let's consider two frequencies in particular. The first, x1, uh, will, have a, will be forced to the 24th bin, right around um, 1,034 hertz. The second sinusoid, x2, will have a frequency at exactly 1 kilohertz, which falls between the 23rd and 24th bin. So let's plot these. Well, let's evaluate them. So if we take the FFT, or the DFT, of X1 and X2, resulting in capital X1, capital X2, and we generate a frequency vector that goes from 0 to uh, FS, and we plot the magnitudes of these. Let's zoom in right here. Now. Blue is x1 and red is x2. It can be seen that x1 has all of the energy compacted into a single bin, whereas x2 has the energy spread around, mostly between its two most adjacent bins. But using our interpolation algorithm, which uses the magnitudes of these bins, we can actually estimate uh, the true underlying frequency. So here's our estimation algorithm. First, we have to calculate on the positive side, so to the k plus 1, grab that value. And we estimate to the negative side, so the k minus 1 side. And then we try to estimate a slope between these two. With that, we can plug that in to get an estimate of our true underlying frequency. So remember, the only two, the, the frequency bins themselves fall on, let's see, what did we say? This was on the 24 over n times fs, uh, 1033.6 hertz, and the next lower bin is 990.5 hertz. So neither of these are capturing our 1k. But using our frequency estimation, we can actually see 1,000.3 hertz, only 0 0.3 hertz off from the true frequency. Pretty good. In the next programming example, which comes from chapter 13 on real-time spectral processing, um, until then, thanks for watching.